Good evening, Gateway Church members, parishioners, and to all of our amazing virtual partners. I am so glad that you are here. Listen, we're going to conclude our September series tonight entitled The Anointing and the Mantle. This is part three. But in this session, I want to talk to you about cooperating with God's anointing. Listen, the yoke-breaking anointing, which I spoke on last week, is available to every believer. But we must come to the point where we're in agreement with the direction and the guidance of God's Holy Spirit to experience any new level of spiritual authority as kings and priests of God's kingdom inside of the earth. Because that's what we're called to be, kings and priests. Now listen, in this session, I want you to get the key of understanding how to move higher in God's use inside of this world. We all need to pursue God, as one song say, chase after God, so that we can understand the higher levels of anointing that God wants to elevate us to. Because we are dealing with different types of crises than the world has ever seen. And so it's going to call for an elevated anointing in order for us to deal with that. So, it is your spiritual rite of passage to have the anointing. And it is your privilege given to us by God to have the anointing. Now watch John, John chapter 14, verse 15 through 17, what the writer says about the anointing. If you love me, this is Jesus talking, you will keep my commandments and I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Why? Because it neither sees him nor knows him. In essence, the world is looking for tangible proof. But the Bible says, you know him. For he dwells with you and will be in you. Now, Jesus spoke this truth because he understood the importance of not only receiving the anointing and knowing the Holy Spirit of God, but also cooperating with God's anointing. Notice how John puts it in John chapter 1, verse 14. It talks about Jesus being full of grace and truth. John writes, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory. Glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. But I need you to notice something of the utmost importance tonight. As far as we know, Jesus did not preach. He did not perform miracles. He did no healings until he was anointed with the Holy Spirit and the power of God. Note the following supporting scripture text in Luke chapter 4 verse 14. The writer writes, And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. And a report about him went out through all the surrounding countries. And then in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, they come back and write, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. And he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. Now, taking a look at these two verses of Scripture, it is important for us to not only discover our gifts and our callings, but also learn to cooperate with the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God. Now, the anointing is somewhat of a mystery to many in the body of Christ. And for years, during the beginning of my ministry in my 20s, I sought to understand more about how the anointing of God works, how to grow in it, how to release it, and so on. And so we define the anointing simply as the impartation of God's ability for doing life and the work He's called us to do. I think of the anointing to be like currency in the spiritual realm. When you have a lot of money in the natural, you can do a lot. And when you have a lot of the Holy Spirit of the anointing of God, you can accomplish much spiritually and in the natural. Jesus reveals this fact to us in John chapter 14, 
Look with me in verse 12. Jesus says, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Now hear me, Gateway Church. That is exactly what we are called to do. To walk in the same miracle working power as Jesus did. And we will when we understand. When we develop in and cooperate with the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God. Listen, we can't do greater until we understand the anointing. We can't do greater until we develop within the anointing. And we can't do greater unless we are cooperate with the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God. Now, cooperation on any level requires one major element of success, and that is blending. I want you to write that in. Blending. When you successfully blend your mind with the Holy Spirit of God and keep it blended, there will not be enough devils from the pit of hell to be able to, to, to defeat you. Let me say it again. When you successfully blend your mind with the Holy Spirit and keep it blended, keep it blended, there will be not one devil it won't be enough devils from the pits of hell that will be able to defeat you. Now, listen, yielding to the anointing brings victory in our life challenges and will do, listen, and it will deliver you from the leeches of your mind. What do I mean? There are some things your mind has attached to that becomes a blood-sucking agent. It sucks the living life out of your life. It sucks the living of faith and the belief of God and in God. And it sucks your potential out of your life. Only because you yield your mind to something that is not in alignment with God. Now listen, this leads to our first power thought. And it says this, the devil can get to the mind. But he cannot get to the soul, which is covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh my God, my God. That's a great place for an amen right there. Listen, I want you to type in, my soul is covered by the blood. He might be able to get to your mind and put things inside of your mind. But the devil can't get to your soul. Because your soul has been covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. I need you to hear me on this matter tonight. You are the only one who can break the seal of the blood on your soul. And although the soul is protected, sealed with the blood of Jesus, the mind is not sealed with the blood. It is protected with the anointing. The anointing, my dear friend, makes the difference between whether you're successful or not. The anointing makes the difference whether you're able to walk in faith or walk in fear. Now hear me. The degree of protection you have for the mind depends upon how much you cooperate with God's anointing and how much of the anointing you use in your life experiences. The Holy Spirit's anointing is purpose to give you God's power, to give you God's peace, to give you God's joy, and to give you clearness of mind. That's one of the reasons. These are several reasons why God wants you and desires for you to have the anointing that comes only from Him. However, if you do not cooperate and allow His anointing to use you, you will not experience any of its benefits. The greatness of God in the soul will not work for you unless you blend your mind and cooperate with the Holy Spirit so God can serve the mind with this. So God can serve the mind what is inside of the soul. What is inside of the soul? Greatness. The greatness of God is inside of your soul. And that is the reason why you got to make, you have to force your mind, you've got to submit your mind to cooperate with the Holy Spirit of God because God want to pull greatness out of your soul and put it inside of your mind. My God, my God. So that your mind can serve with greatness. Hear me. Why do I say that when we cooperate with the anointing, the Holy Spirit serves the mind with the greatness 
that is in the soul. Well, here are three reasons. Three reasons. Hear me now. And first of all, the eternal soul from God is the reservoir for the mind. It's the storage tank, so to speak. There is no limit to the capacity of the soul. Let me say it again. I need you to hear me tonight. There is no limit to the capacity of your eternal soul. Because it is eternal and because it is spiritual, it can hold all of the Godhead and all of heaven. Oh my God, listen, that's why Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is within you. How can you say that? Because the soul encapsulates and it cannot, listen, it has unlimited capacity. And so when the kingdom of God came inside of your soul through Jesus Christ, because it's unlimited in its capacity, it's able to hold the kingdom of God and the Godhead. That's why the Bible says that I am in the Father, the Father is in me, you are in me, therefore we are one. And it's all inside of you. Imagine that. Godhead inside of you. The kingdom of heaven is inside of you. Now watch this now because you need this. Because this is going to be very important. Secondly, the Holy Spirit comes to serve. Watch this. To see that the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the anointing. First and foremost, love. Everything we do in this life on behalf of the kingdom must begin with love. Why? Because before God sent his son, he loved the world so much. While we were yet sinners, he loved us so much, he wanted to reconcile us to himself. He sent his son. So when the Holy Spirit was sent, the Holy Spirit comes to serve and to see that the love of God through us is shed abroad in our hearts by the anointing. That's what Paul said in Romans chapter 5, verse 5. He says, And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Listen, we can't even love right without the Holy Spirit. <laughs> All of our love is conditional. But when you get the Holy Spirit of God and you get some God, you get God love, that's a that's agape love. Agape love is unconditional love. It comes with the grace of God just sprinkled all over it, saturated in it. The Holy Ghost sheds abroad the love of God from our souls into our minds. Listen, we can't even love right until we allow it to move from our soul to our mind. The Holy Spirit of God, the love of God coming from our soul and moving into our mind. And without the anointing, we are incapable of loving in the same manner as God. When the life of God, when the Holy Spirit is in your soul, my dear friend, heaven rejoices. But the soul is hampered and hindered if the mind do not have a good blend daily with the Holy Spirit. It is handicapped to you. And it is a handicap to God. That's why you must blend your mind with the anointing of God's Spirit. Now, this lack of blend and cooperation with the Holy Spirit ties the hand of God in our lives. It is essential that the blend of your mind and the mind of the Holy Spirit be unwavering and that it cooperates with the leading of the Holy Spirit, which is based on God. Now watch this, the Father's will and based on the Father's plan. The Holy Spirit comes to do not its own will, but do the will of the Father in our lives and inside of this world. Not to bring its own plans, but to bring the plans of the Father into our mind, our heart, and then to the world. Watch this now. Again, cooperation is dependent on blending. Say it again with me. Cooperation is dependent on blending. Now, to blend means to mix, means to unite, to go well together, to harmonize which is a great transition to our third point tonight. Thirdly, the anointing comes to unite our minds with the mind of the Holy Spirit, to harmonize, to mix, to blend with the living Word of God. Blending with the Holy Spirit produces a desired quality, the quality of the mind that the Lord 
had predestined and planned for us. Now you have to check yourself. Can you say tonight that the quality of your mind is, is right in alignment with God's word, that it, it needs nothing more? Listen to what Matthew says. Matthew chapter 22 and verse 37. And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with what? With all of your mind. If something is distracting you from doing the will of God, God doesn't have all your mind. If you're, if you're too busy to do things like prepare your hearts in prayer, in fasting, like attending a church service and hearing the word of God, or praising and worshiping God, or going to a Bible study, or listening and participating in a Bible study. Your mind is not all God's. Remember, what this, remember this phrase, with all thy mind. God doesn't want part of your mind. He wants all of your mind. He doesn't want it all your mind on Monday, some of it on Tuesday, and perhaps a little on Wednesday. He wants all of your mind. Now hear me. You must love God with all your mind, not with just your soul, not with just the spirit within you. You've got to love him with all of your mind. In other words, have a love mind. I want you to type that in. Love mind. You cannot carry hate, grudges, anything else foreign to the Holy Spirit and still have a love mind. I think that bears repeating. You cannot carry hate, grudges, or anything else that's foreign to the Holy Spirit and still have a love mind. God loved and he gave his son. Jesus loved and he gave his life. You see, love produces. Love produces greatness. It is with Jesus' love mind that his blood was shed for all of the world. The shed blood of Jesus Christ protects the soul. Never forget this. Don't ever forget this truth. The love of Jesus was the thing that carried him to the cross. It was the thing that he shed blood for. Never forget that the blood of Jesus Christ, it protects your soul. And it protects your mind with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Only the right kind of mind, God's love mind, can have the anointing of God. Let me stop for a moment. I want to say it again because you need to hear this. Only the right kind of mind. What's the right kind of mind? God's love mind. That is the only kind of mind that can have the anointing of God. You want to know why you're not operating on the Spirit of God don't use you to be operating. The Spirit of God don't operate through you with, with great power, with great levels of anointing. It's because you've got to check your mind. Is it operating in love? Because a God love mind, listen, he releases all of his power when it's necessary for all of your challenges. For any point when you're trying to bring someone into a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ or when you're trying to cast out a devil or when you're trying to speak against a spirit of oppression, you need a love that God's love mind so that the anointing can speak through you and cast those spirits away and save that life. We need the love mind of God. Now listen, the anointing is the divine presence of the Lord forever with their children, with his children. It ever abides with us if we let it. Listen, but many Christians have fallen short of the glory of God and are falling in, and they're failing rather inside of their assignments. They're failing in their calling. They're failing in their ministry to the world because they did not have a love mind. They have not left their minds with God as they should have, not kept them in shape for the Holy Spirit to use them. And they have walked with difficulty along with God's spiritual journey. They have walked crippled because they failed to have a love mind. The mind of the Holy Spirit and your mind are meant to blend in perfection. And this is not difficult. Please hear me. This is not difficult if you yield the mind to him, your mind to him, and cooperate with his anointing. All it takes is submitting. The anointing of God is the presence of God with us and in us. The Lord wants us to remember him. And I believe that the worst sin in this world 
is forgetting God. Come what may, the worst sin in this world is forgetting God. The Lord made Adam and Eve with minds that could reason and think and remember just like God's mind. But their minds, of course, were not as powerful nor as great. Notice power thought number two. It says, God didn't intend minds to be equal to his. He meant for them to cooperate with his. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Listen, I need you to embrace that tonight. God didn't intend minds to be equal to his. He, he meant for them to operate with his. Again, that's a statement of cooperation. In essence, we have to stay plugged in to God's mind at all times. Man's thoughts were always to be as pure as God's thoughts. His mind to function in perfection with God's mind. Listen, God would come down in the cool of the day to walk with Adam and Eve and to talk with them. Today, it is through the blood of Jesus Christ that we have fellowship with the Lord. He lives within us. We don't have to wait until the cool of the day. We can wake up in the middle of the night and talk to our Lord God. We can just, as we, as we move throughout our day, every day, we can just take a break and just talk to God. While we're driving in the car, we can talk and commune with God. You know why? Because the blood of Jesus gave us that privilege. The blood of Jesus gave us life, took away all of our sins, cleansed us, uh, cleansed our soul and our mind and our body so that we are in divine posture to cooperate with the anointing of God's Spirit so that we can accomplish, watch this, great exploits, both spiritually and naturally. In Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, section B of that particular verse, the Bible says, But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. This is a great promise, and this is one of the most courageous verses in the Bible. It, it is based on the word do. It's based on that word, and the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. My God, my God. Listen, this word implies cooperation resulting with actions. Are you hearing me tonight? We, we, listen, when we cooperate with the anointing that is within us, the Holy Spirit will release healing. It will release deliverance. It will release guidance and protection into our lives. Cooperation. It teaches you what is from God and what is not God. The Holy Spirit and the anointing of God. And it protects you from all deceptions of the enemy. The anointing within teaches you concerning all things that pertain to spiritual and natural life and the anointing equips you to be well-rounded persons in the body, in the soul, and in the spirit. The more sensitive we become to the anointing within, the more settled, established, and grounded that we become in God. The anointing within also enhances our ability to discern and to cooperate with the anointing that comes upon us. Paul writes this in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 and 22. He says, And it is God who establishes us with you in Christ, and has anointed us, and who has also put his seal on us, and given us his spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. My God, my God. A guarantee. Guarantee what? It guarantees our salvation. It guarantees our greatness. It guarantees that whatever God has predestined for us to do, we can accomplish. My God, listen, I don't have to worry or fear about my ministry assignment. I walk in destiny. And that destiny is covered by the blood of Jesus and covered with the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God. I will achieve. 
And I want you to write that inside there. I want you to declare it, as a matter of fact, in the atmosphere of your home where you're watching right now. And I want you to type it in, in the name of Jesus, because of the anointing and the blood of Christ, I will achieve everything that God has predestined for my life. I will not be afraid. I will not be ashamed. I will not turn my back on God. I will keep moving forward toward one success after another as I face the challenges in life. I'm coming on the other side a victim. God have mercy on our soul. Can you just give God a clap offering and an amen right there? Now the Holy Spirit is the spirit of newness. So each day we can be renewed and refreshed in the anointing by only receiving it by faith and allowing it to flow as never-ending rivers inside of our souls. That's what I love about, love about David. So every single morning he wakes up. This is God's grace and his mercy and I dare say his anointing is renewed afresh inside our spirit. Every day we need to wake up confident knowing that God has refreshed us and so as some final thoughts tonight, I want you to just type in, I'm cooperating with the anointing. I'm going to pause for a moment. I want you to type that in. This day, I'm cooperating with the anointing. The reason why I want you to type it in, and I want you to come into agreement with yourself and with the word of God, because we are in a season right now where people are being promoted to, to, to new levels of spiritual authority as kings and priests in God's kingdom. They will carry. I'm going to prophesy this inside of your spirit. I'm prophesying it inside the world because we are living in the last of the last days. This new, this new level of anointing that's going to come on people. They will carry so much of the glory and the presence of God upon them that demons will flee at their presence. They will live and move in a very high level of kingdom power and influence. And you know why I say that? Because I want you, I want to, but I want you to go to the next level of anointing. I want you to go to the next level of authority. I want you to be dangerous for the kingdom of God inside of the earth. I want you to get the keys to the key, keys of the kingdom, unlocking binding spirits in the earth and unlocking blessings in the heavenly upon this earth. I want you to have the key to moving higher as we begin to do great things for God in the, in the great great church tonight. I want you to be a vessel that God can use to do extraordinary things. I've expounded on these truths tonight in this teaching that set on the heavenly mantles over this past month. And I want you to take it serious because every single one of us have a mantle in our, on our life. We have a responsibility to God. We have a responsibility to do great works on behalf of the kingdom. God wants to mantle, anoint, and empower you to fulfill his purpose for your life. But we must cooperate with his anointing. And that's how I want to end this tonight. We must cooperate with God's anointing if we're going to walk in that higher level of authority and anointing that God is about to release in this earth. Well, that concludes our study for tonight. And I pray you have been informed, inspired, and transformed because as your pastor and teacher, as I always say, my assignment is for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, until we all come into the unity of the faith. And you know how that happens? With the power of the anointing of God. If you're looking for the power of the anointing to flow inside of your life and cooperate with God's agenda, tonight I want you to bow in a word of prayer with me. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we humbly come to you this night and we are standing upon your word. Your word is powerful. It's sharp. Your word is, is, is unending. Your word is true. And I want to live under, the, under your anointing. We want to cooperate with your anointing and the power of the anointing. And so tonight, dear God, may everything that our enemies have used to try and to entangle us and ensnare us and defeat us may be broken in the name of Jesus. Touch our life, Lord. 
Break the yokes of bondage in our life and set us free to do your bidding in the earth. Father, we pray that every enemy of our destiny by this anointing lose their power in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that every chain hindering us from fulfilling your destiny be broken in the name of Jesus tonight. And God, we receive a fresh anointing with a fresh empowerment tonight to do great exploits on your behalf for the kingdom of God. Father, in Jesus' name right now, everyone under the sound of my voice, may they receive a fresh anointing right now, right where they are in the name of Jesus. If you're in your living room, receive a fresh anointing and power of God. Let it rush over your life and may it be imparted inside of your spirit and your mind. If you're in your car, outside, no matter where you are, if you're listening, may a fresh anointing fall upon you right now in Jesus' name. Because there are great works for us to do. And we need the power of the anointing of God. Thank you, Father, for meeting all of our needs. Thank you, God, for protecting us. Thank you, God, for the provisions. Thank you, God, for the purpose that you've imparted into all of our lives. Now where we stand and walk in destiny, Put our hands on the plow and be ready to work until you call us home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. Thank you once again for joining me for another edition of Transformation of Bible Study. And I pray you've been blessed. And listen, I'm going to meet you back here same time next week. And I want you to come prepared to study because we're going into a new series. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. You just got to tune in. But can you do something for me before I let you go? Why don't you share this with someone? They need to hear this word tonight. I'm sure they're going to be blessed as you were blessed. And so I will see you next week, same time, same place. And never forget, listen, you are the most awesome people in all of the world. And Lady Kathy and I, we love you dearly. And there's nothing you can do about it. God bless you. We'll see you again soon. In Jesus' name.